Dr. Baskar, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Anna University, Chennai. Area of specialization is software engineering and database system. Guided more than 12 research scholars, published more than 40 national and international papers. He is a reviewer and editorial board member in international journals. Welcome to UGC lecture series in computer science. In this series of lectures, we have been looking at software engineering, a subject and in this particular session, we will be looking at capability maturity model. Some of the background about this capability maturity model, it was actually begun in 1986 by the Department of Defense to help improve government software contracts. All the softwares that a government has to initiate, those software requires certain set of quality in it. So, it was initially deployed to Department of Defense in the year 1986. Work started at METR, then at Software Engineering Institute at Carnegie Mellon University. It was actually initiated by a professor called Watts Humbry, who was the initial author. Then it was taken up by Mark Polk, Bill Curtis and others in their team. It borrows heavily from a general concept of total quality management and a work of Philip Crossby. This CMM is under active play for more than 15 years and it has been ongoing. This has gained significant interest over non-Department of Defense software vendors also. Any software in today's market, if it is to be developed, we check for the quality constraints. Say, capability maturity model is one among them. How do we compare ourselves with this software development with a baseball? We initially consider into three different constraints. The first constraint is what happens when a ball is hit to a little league team. If the ball hits a little league team, there are so many reasons that might arise out of it. Everyone runs around it at random. They might do the right thing or they might not. The next time the ball is hit in the same place, they may do something different. So, this scenario says when a ball is hit, they might do the right thing, but they may not know that whether they are doing it right or not. And the second thing says, if it is to be continued or if it is to be done at the second time, then also they may not do the same thing. So, it is not a professional development as far as it is concerned. Say software is something like that. It is not the software once it has been developed. Software once developed and the subsequent software that needs to be developed are to maintain the same set of quality. So, that is what this is trying to make us understand. When a ball hits a little league team, it may do right thing or it may not. And the next time it hits in the same place, they may do something different. The same, when it happens with a professional team, how does they respond? What happens when a ball is hit to a professional team? Everyone moves in a coordinated fashion based on the practicing that play many times. So, whenever a ball hits a particular point and if it is a professional team, they all move towards the same, same direction and in a coordinated fashion. Sometimes they fail to make the right play. Say this happens only 5 percent of the time a maximum, but they almost always try to do the right thing. The third constraint which says what happens when a team loses the star player. If there seems to be a star player in the entire team, if the entire team loses that particular star player, how does they respond? A little league team gets much worse because he is the one who actively leads the entire team into a coordinated fashion. So, the little league team will get worse and a professional team often has some waiting to fill in and a self improvement to the same scenario of baseball, a self improvement after a bad play, a little league player 
don't know what went wrong or they blame each other a professional team discuss their play and look for ways to improve the next time there is an infield hit with two outs and let's do this instead so whenever it happens in a little league team they blame each other saying that you have went wrong and this time i might i might have went wrong so it has been equaled it has been tallied whereas the same if it happens with the professional team they will try to analyze where it went wrong and they'll try to sort it out the next time so a professional baseball team is more mature than a little league team in term not referring in terms of the age so a professional team has self perpetuating quality by which they make good plays develop new players like themselves find ways to make better plays what we understand from this particular slide is whenever we wanted to make a little league team into a professional team it requires a basic certain basic level of maturity in them so this maturity is not in terms of the age say we cannot expect the same level of maturity from a 40 year person and not from a 30 year person a 30 year person at most of the times might do a very good activity in terms of the development also in terms of the play also so now referring or comparing this with the capability maturity model so whatever we have understood as a little league team and a professional team a professional team behaves more mature in terms of its play likewise when a software development team considers the capability maturity model it is more of the maturity which plays into the entire software team so in the same way high quality software organizations are different from the low quality organizations cmm tries to capture and describe these differences we could easily figure out a maturity companies from a non mature companies a company which is at right at the startup level might lack in terms of the maturity and the software company who have been established and been running for a long period in time they might have adopted to these maturity standards and next time when they wanted to deploy the same kind of a software they will give us more quality oriented software so this cmm strives to create software development organizations that are mature or more mature than before applying cmm so by where when we apply the capability maturity model what we can expect on the software is in terms of the quality and in terms of the maturity this cmm is generally taken up in five different levels of software process maturity this software process maturity is not something to do with what we have seen till now as of software engineering is concerned we have been discussing software engineering as different phases of development like analysis design implementation testing operation and maintenance these are not the five different phases which a capability model expects instead how effectively we have to manage the analysis phase how effectively we have to organize the design phase how effectively we have to undergo the implementation phase so that is what this capability maturity model is about to teach us this includes a lot of detail about each level we will look at some of it here but before getting on to the actual levels of implementation we we'll look at what cmm i means the cmm you might know cmm stands for capability maturity model this i stands for integrated integration as we have already seen integration is all levels put together assembled together in one assembly or in one group so capability maturity model integration is a proven industry framework to improve product quality and development of efficiency for both hardware and software so whether it could be on terms of a hardware or it could be on the terms of a software 
we are trying to improve the efficiency of the software by where we are trying to improve the quality of the software in turn. So, this was actually being sponsored by US Department of Defense in cooperation with Carnegie Mellon University and Software Engineering Institute which laid the basis for the development of capability maturity model integration. Many companies have been developed in CMMI and those have been certain companies have been Motorola and Ericsson. CMMI has been established as a model to improve business results. What has been achieved as part of this integration? What has been delivered as part of this integration? What is the kind of quality that I can expect on these level of products? What is the kind of efficiency that is proven after implementation of capability maturity model can be easily understood based on this CMMI. So, CMMI is staged as 5 levels to describe the maturity of the organization same as the predecessor for CMM and this has vastly improved version of CMM and this emphasizes on business needs, integration and institutionalization. CMMI provides a way to focus and manage hardware and software development from the product inception through deployment and maintenance. So, when you tend to see the entire phases of its development from the product inception, inception is the initial phase where we get it from the hands of the customer. Whatever the customer tries to provide us in terms of the deliberate expectation, they will initially transfer the kind of expectation which they have to the developer. So, that is what is called a product inception from the time of inception till the time of deployment. Deployment is giving back safe to the hands as expected by the customer. So, giving it back to the customer and at the stage of maintenance is being done or it is being carried out at the CMM levels. A certain standard of ISO TL 9000 are still required, but then CMMI interfaces well with them also. CMMI and TL are complementary, both are needed since they address different aspects. This ISO and TL 9000 is a process compliance standard and CMM is a process improvement model. So, that is a basic difference between the CMMI and the ISO 9000 standards. Most of the product which we wanted to address with, we will ask them whether it has been ISO certified or not. It's, it applies to both the hardware and the software in turn, but then it is actually to take up the process compliance alone, whereas when we address it with CMMI, it basically takes up process improvement also, where and what aspect we can improve on this particular process model can also be addressed here. Now, we will look at the different levels of the CMM. It initially starts with level 1 which is named as initial level. Anything at all is a basic need as far as level 1 is concerned. It is ad hoc and chaotic, will have some success, but will also have failures and badly missed deadlines. So, as an initial stage, if a beginner wanted to reach a level 1 of its development in terms of CMM, if the CMM is concerned as initial level, it is ad hoc, it is not specific with its own set of objectives and it is chaotic, it is random in nature also. So, it may have failures and it might have badly missed out with deadlines. Let us go in for a break. Welcome back after the break. I am discussing about capability maturity model in this session and right out we have compared this maturity process with a baseball league team and we have been comparing with a little league team versus a professional league team where 
actually a maturity is required. So, this capability maturity model talks more about a process improvement. As an initial stage towards the improvement, we have been looking at level 1 which is called initial level, where this level has got ad hoc and chaotic manner and will have some success, but will also have failures that are to be addressed and badly missed deadlines. Whenever a software needs to be addressed, three things we may have to remember. One is in terms of the time. We should not run out of the time or we should make effective deadlines. Two in terms of the cost and third one in terms of the quality. So, all these three can be achieved when a process is actually being carried effectively. So, as an initial level, if I could leave out some of the failures and if I could figure out some of the badly met deadlines, even then it could be solved. Now, we will go for the second level. The second level is repeatable, where the software processes are defined, documented, practiced and people are trained in them. Whereas, when you compare this with the first level, it was ad hoc and it was chaotic, it was not ordered at all, it was random. So, now when we look at level 2, we repeat the same procedure iteratively, so that we gain a more of experience. So, as we experience on the same set of processes, what we get is, we give, get a defined output, further we can document it, so that we do not repeat the same kind of a mistake next time and we are basically getting trained or practiced and people are trained in them. Groups across an organization may use different processes. So, these standards are not to mention that these are certain set of processes which you need to adopt with, but then it experiences by itself with a defined states called defined, documented, practiced and trained. The third stage with the same model is with defined. Software processes are consistent and known across the whole organization. And the fourth process defines about managed, where the software process and results are measured quantitatively and processes are evaluated with this idea. Say we have been looking at a simple system of building a result management, student result management system. Now, consider the same student result management system as it is to be matured. Say, as an initial level, when we wanted to develop an automated system for the result management, initially every student will like to have or would like to have their result published over a different media, say in form of a text, in form of an image, in form of a web and different media like that may be a SMS also, but then trying to make it automated or a making a mature model, so that it gives a same kind of a result to all the forms of a medium is more difficult. So, when we have initially started with create, creation of a result management system, at the initial phase, all the results have been in a random fashion. Say, one, one staff member would have evaluated his own paper and would have displayed in his own terms. The second staff member would have evaluated in his own form and would have displayed individually. Now, that when I wanted to assemble all these results together and I wanted to publish it on a same time, then I might have to process it in a certain format. That is what I have said in level 2, which is repeatable, where I try to collect the details from all the faculty members, assemble it together, whereas, where I get a clear definition and I document it saying that this subject, this student has performed well and the second subject he has performed this much and third subject he has performed this much and the overall aggregate is this much. And the third level says defined where a process being consistent. This procedure has been done for a longer period in time 
and has been taken over different semesters and since it has been clearly defined. And the fourth process is managed. Any process that we would define initially, we will say it as a management process. A management clearly indicates that it has to be properly trained in a different process methodology. So, software processes and results are measured quantitatively. This is very vital and processes are evaluated with this data. And the last one is level 5 which talks about optimization. So, optimizing is a continuous process improvement, experimenting with new methods and technologies, change process when find something that works better. So, I have been repeating this procedure management procedure for a longer period in time, but that might require a lot of rectification in it. Why rectification what I mean is there has been so many regulations that might have come across, there has been so many acts, there has been so many reg rules that might have come across. Taking into consideration all the rules, regulations and the act, how the system responds or how the management system responds to those rules, regulation and acts. So, that becomes your optimization factor here, where in optimization again I repeat it has been a continuous process improvement phase and it experiments with new methods and technologies, change process when find something that works better. So, this has been a detailed explanation of all the five levels what we have discussed in capability maturity model. I repeat all the five levels, we have started with the initial phase, level 2 mentions you with repeatable where again we will get a clear defined set of objectives, those are to be documented and to be trained and level 3 is defined, level 4 is managed and level 5 is optimized. So, now we will look at the detailed set of requirements at the initial stage. Every team needs to tackle projects in different ways every time or each time and can have strong success, but may not repeat the failures. Sometimes cost estimates are accurate or some cost and some time estimates are being accurate and many are far off. If you listen to my previous lectures, I would have said more than 41 percent of the projects run out of cost. It is not generally by 10 percent of the overall cost that has been estimated, it is majorly to 50 percent more than what has been estimated. There might be a slip in the time and cost estimate might not be accurate. So, the success comes from smart people doing the right things, hard to recover from good people leaving the same and a frequent crisis and firefighting mode would lead to the initial phase. Many believe this is the standard for software development and CMM says no. So, if CMM will not operate on a firefighting mode and will not take up to frequent crisis. Many software development organizations are at the beginning stage that is at level 1 phase by themselves, where they estimate curve and process diagram. Whereas, when we are at the level 2 that is repeatable state, where we majorly contribute to objective definitions. So, the key areas in the repeatable phases are requirements management, software project planning, project tracking and oversight, subcontract management, quality assurance, configuration management. By requirements management we mean we would have gathered requirements from different people, say from the customer, from the stakeholder, from the previously experienced team, from the layman, from all of these members we would have got certain set of requirements which we may have to validate further. Then with those set of requirements we will go for a software project planning and these planned project are need to be tracked for its 
effective time schedule and will be checked for its oversight. Oversight in turns will, me, will make at times go for some crisis or delay in this schedule. Subcontract management, quality assurance and configuration management. This usually takes a minimum of 18 plus months. Some ask for level 1.5 also. Say one in terms of configuration improvement as 1.5. Again, we will try to estimate the curve as we have done it at level 1 and we will still try to think on the process diagram in turn. Level 3 defines level 2 plus the organization wide process focus, organization wide process definition, training program in all of the focus and the definition, integrated software management about applied how many projects have been applied per project, software product engineering in terms of coding, in terms of implementation, in terms of maintenance etcetera, intergroup coordination, peer reviews, estimating curve and process diagram. So, these two points of estimation of curve and the process diagram has been repeating for all the three phases that is initial, defined and repeatable phases of the levels of CMM. So, when we look at level 4 which talks most of its managed constraints, it is level 3 plus some of the key aspects that is required for level 4. Quantitative process management where we try to gather data, quality management mostly it will be data driven, quality improvement. Again, we will try to estimate on the curve and the process diagram. This process diagram is being given higher concentration and the curve needs to be estimated basically because the capability maturity model addresses on the process improvement. And the fifth stage is about optimizing where the key areas are level 4 plus data defect prevention, technology change management, process change management and estimation of the same curve and process diagram. Summary, in this particular session we have started with capability maturity model which basically addresses on how a software requires maturity during its process improvement. And we have looked at the different phases of capability maturity model which are initial, repeatable, defined, managed and optimized. Now some of the questions for this particular session, why is CMMI required? How do you compare the ISO standards to a CMM? Mention the key process areas under CMM. Thank you.